Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. I promised you a tour yesterday of the fountain garden today, so here it is. This is my fountain that I finally got this year after waiting two years from having a broken fountain. I turned the broken fountain into a bird bath for one year, but after that I just really wanted a new one. So. Um, I'm so excited. I just love this fountain. The noise that it makes is so nice to just listen to and I could just stare at it all day. Um, so I expanded the beds to the left around the fountain because it was a circle uh, up until this year. And then we were having some problematic areas um, right here in the front um, with the soil um, and the soil level. So um, I did some dry stacking with the stones that I got. Um, you'll see a lot of stones around our garden and those are primarily from um, farmers fields, Christmas tree farmer fields, um, other place that um, we can get them from for really cheap. Um, mostly it's just um, a small price like 20 or 50 bucks and we pick up a truckload and bring them home and move them around and put them where we want them. So. I love stones. Um, I probably got that from my mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look here and get a little bit closer in um, so I can show you a little bit about what's around the fountain. Um, starting up front here, we have a Mugo pine. And uh, this year, it actually had some really creepy caterpillar type worms on it. And um, so I sprayed a lot of them off. I cut some of them in half with my clippers. And you can see they did leave a little bit of damage, such as on this branch right here where the needles are a little thinner. But overall, um, it's not too bad now that the uh, candles have put their growth out. It filled out again quite well. So um, we have some uh, of the bubblegum pink um, vista, super tuna, super tuna vista in this bed. Um, and then in front of that is an August moon hosta, which has a really nice glow. And also behind it, there are several as well. Um, I really like those and the kind of contrast um, that they give and the lightness that they give underneath of the fountain. So then in front we have some hookera. That is the plum pudding variety which I have split over the years throughout the garden. And I have an azalea here, it's a little bush, along with some really beautiful veronica right here. They're so pretty. Or it's a penstemon, I think. Um, this is the first year that they've bloomed. I got them in just a little teeny tiny pot. Um, but I just love how dainty the flowers are and, um, the color of them and the way they look up against the fountain. So then coming over here to the side, we have, um, peonies and, um, obviously they're done blooming. Um, they're really gorgeous, deep, um, pink. And then this Japanese maple that um, I just got this year and planted um, and we'll see how it does here. It seems to feel um, a little hot, um, a little stressed, but I think some of that just happens when you plant trees and bushes in July. So anyways, um, we'll see how it does. Hopefully as the weather gets cooler, um, it will look happier as the days go by. I've been spraying um, these peonies uh, because they have a little powdery mildew, as you can see there, and black spot. Um, but they usually get it every year, and um, they come up fine the next year. Um, it's just kind of something that I deal with in this space um, where they're planted. And I don't think the humidity of the fountain really helps a whole lot with that, but I just really like the way that they look the rest of the year. And um, it's really not that bad looking. So here um, we have a paniculata hydrangea, 
and um, I think that this one is like the ice cream sundae version. I think that's what it's called. Um, it does start to change um, color over time, a light to deeper um, pink. And um, I just really like watching it change. Then at the base of that, um, I have some really pretty um, blue sedum that I planted years ago. Um, and I wish I could tell you what kind it is, but I don't know. Another um, plum pudding hookera. If anybody knows what this blue sedum is, please put it down in the con comments. Um, there's just so many varieties of so many different kinds of plants. Usually I kind of remember the family that they belong to. Not necessarily uh, the specific variety. <clears throat> Try and get better at that. Um, a gay feather. Just one. <laughs> That'll fill out a little bit next year. And then um, this here is a flax that will bloom in the spring. Um, its spread is about 12 to 18 inches wide. Um, and I believe it's supposed to bloom um, like a bluish color. So um, next year when it blooms for the first time, I will hopefully be able to share that with you. And I have a verbena right here that is not yet flowering. I believe that one's going to be white. Some liriope. And then here I have a Wigilia bush. I think this is wine and roses. You can see um, earlier in the summer it gets simply covered in um, these really pink, really pretty pink blooms. Um, and uh, the dark foliage really sets them off. So I like that a lot. Um, and then it just kind of flowers sparsely for the rest of the summer. But it's kind of nice because it does give a little bit um, of bloom, as I said, throughout the rest of the summer, rather than just being plain foliage, which a lot of shrubs do. Um, I have pruned up the underside because I wanted to be able to plant underneath of it. Um, and so that's what I did this year. There was some dead wood that was in there and there was little damage from installing the new fountain um, and so I thought that was the best way to go. So I'm not sure if all of the um, little like suckers that are down there are going to be strong and try to grow back next year but um, if they do I'll probably clip those back too. And then over here we have some purple basil. That's that dark purple right there. Um, super beautiful smells really good. It does have pretty flowers as well, so um, it'll be cool when it uh, blooms um, because I also have this um, gorgeous salvia um, back here, and um, I just love the dark purple against that August moon pasta and then the pink with it as well, and uh, this foxglove right here still blooming. I think it's got some more blooms coming. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. And then there's a little um, impatience right here. Um, it's just setting some new buds. It just lost its flowers and setting some new buds. So that should be in bloom again soon. And then every year I like to plant some small arborvitas in pots so that I have them at the end of the season to plant out in the landscape. I made them really small. They don't cost that much, but they make a really nice um, centerpiece for containers. Um, this year I put some petunias around them. And um, behind it here I have another um, super tunia. I think that one's going to be bubblegum. It hasn't flowered yet. Um, I did get that one on sale, and so um, I had to cut it back pretty significantly, um, but pretty soon it's going to bloom, and it's going to bloom for a couple more months. Real nice, I think. This rose is not showing any blooms right now, but it's an oh-so-easy uh, rose, and I'll show you over here. I have another one. 
and so it's actually quite gorgeous. The buds are a little darker than the flower, which is like this coral pink, and it turns lighter over time. So you can kind of see there's three different flowers here that um, are a good example of how you have a darker one that then turns a little lighter over here and then even lighter before um, they finally fall off. But I'm not much of a rose person this year. I um, decided to just go for it because um, they look so pretty. And um, I got, uh, after this geranium here, I have um, another Oh So Easy Rose in white. And I have those on both sides. And this one is not as much in bloom right now. Um, it's setting quite a few um, buds and getting ready to go through another flush. Um, I really just like having the white geranium um, between them kind of filling in towards the back of uh, this side I do have a cherry um, tree that was a volunteer in my yard I have a weeping cherry out front um, and hopefully I'll get to show you that bed soon as well um, and so this was a volunteer I potted it up in a little pot with some potting soil and a little fertilizer and um, it's grown quite well so far this season. So I have now popped it into the ground and I'm hoping it will um, survive the winter and the bunnies and the, whatever else may come along and try to eat it. Um, and that it will be a flowering, a spring flowering tree for me here, a small one. I'm not sure if um, those type of volunteers are actually really sturdy, but uh, it's worth a try. Hey, it's free, right? 